First, I want to thank everyone, our panelists especially, but also you all for coming to hear today's presentation, uh, how we did it starting and growing a business in tech. And I'd like to welcome our guests. So we have, uh, starting at the end there, we have Carlos Avila from the New Bedford Ocean Cluster. Uh, Carlos's bio says at uh, Mass Maritime, Carlos was the assistant director of admissions with special responsibility for international recruitment initiatives. At Bristol, he collaborated with offshore wind industry partners by connecting prospective applicants to training opportunities at the community college as an associate director of college access. Later, as associate director of career and technical trainings, he was a National Offshore Wind Institute audit team member. So you're all probably familiar with the Maui Institute in New Bedford. Carlos had a hand in preparing that, uh, that facility for the Global Wind Organization accreditation. Okay. So the NAWI is the nation's first purpose-built offshore wind training facility in New Bedford. Thank you, Carlos, for being part of that audit, auditing team to get it ready for accreditation. Next to Carlos, we have Shilpi Singh. Shilpi is the president of New Bedford Maritime Innovation, and her focus is on workforce development and training in the maritime sector. She also serves on the board for RoboSys Automation, a company which provides autonomous maritime solutions globally. She recently transitioned from her role as the assistant director for MIT Sustainable Urbanization Lab at MIT. She comes with over 15 years of experience in corporate strategy and sustainability in the US, the UK, and the Middle East. She has, had, she has held several roles throughout this time where she successfully led the business development activities with existing and prospective clients locally and globally. Prior to this, she has also worked with an internationally renowned environmental firm in the US, which, pioneer, which is a pioneer in providing solutions and services for sustainable development, while also serving renewable energy markets. She demonstrates tremendous knowledge and understanding of sustainability policies and programs. She has shown capability in leading the teams from initiation to implementation of various corporate programs and across teams. She holds a sustainability certificate from the Sloan School of Business at MIT, a master's in urban planning from the University of Michigan, and a master's of science from the University of Florida. She is fluent in English and Hindi. She is, boss, she is based in Boston, Massachusetts. And here we have Jorge Science. And Jorge, believe it or not, is a Bristol alum. Let's hear it, Bay Hall. <laughs> so Jorge is the co-founder and the director of design at Traza Design. He has a master's in architecture and a bachelor's in architecture from Roger Williams University and an associate in civil engineering from Bristol. Jorge began his career in civil engineering before pursuing his true passion for architecture. He has seven years of experience in design. His projects range from multi-million dollar commercial office buildings to historic renovation projects to high-end interior design and commercial spaces. In, most, in the most recent years, his focus shifted to residential work. He enjoys the personal collect connections he can create with homeowners and the immediate impact that he can have on their lives. Jorge co-founded Traza Design LLC with Jerry Batista in 2021. Traza Design is a residential design studio that believes in providing their clients with modern and truly creative ideas. Their passion for residential architecture, interior design, 
and visualization brought them together to deliver high quality, client focused and efficient design. They believe everyone deserves quality design solutions and each project is a creative opportunity. Welcome panelists. Just say a couple of things just to follow up on uh, uh, the imposter sharp's uh, remarks this event actually has been uh, is, is a part of uh, what we call it as global entrepreneurship day so today is the designated uh, uh, entrepreneurship day in the city of fall river and all over the world globally we are celebrating global entrepreneurship week uh, and uh, it actually is great to collaborate with stem area as well as the imposter sharp uh, sort of like bring some of these tech leaders from the region uh, and, and just talk about uh, their entrepreneurial journey and, and uh, if any one of you actually is interested in, in starting uh, a business in the technology field, this actually is a great uh, space to be. So uh, again, we greatly appreciate all of you being here. We particularly thank all the panelists uh, because uh, without whom this uh, event would not have happened. I, and I really want to thank uh, Dean Foster Sharp for this collaboration. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, so with that said, I'm not going to be here for the rest of uh, the, the meeting, unfortunately. I have a few other things lined up. But uh, enjoy, enjoy the afternoon and uh, hope uh, everyone has fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So I have a question for the audience first, and then I'll come back to our guests. Um, what is technology? So we said that it's starting and growing a business in tech, but what is tech? What is technology? Because if you listen to Hollywood, tech is all computers and people in dark rooms typing you know, code and trying to hack a mainframe somewhere, but that's not really what tech is. So I wanna ask you, what is tech? Oh, what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is it like advancements of um, public goods and products or services? Okay. It, of anything, basically. Advancements. Mm -hmm. Great word. Up in the the top there. So good to see you. It's good to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, I feel like that's how we communicate in the world today. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, the older generation, I have a mother-in-law who just turned 80 and, you know, um, without them keeping up with that, like, it's just, it's almost some of the things that they have to go through to install technology, you know, whether it's a computer or registering for something, but I think it's how we communicate today. Okay. Definitely, there's a rule in communication. It facilitates it. Yes. It's a vehicle and a tool that's enhanced the way we live our lives and the way we do business. Absolutely. A vehicle for us to improve and advance the way we do business communication and produce goods. Absolutely. Uh, a, an actual different definition for technology is it's the application of scientific knowledge. So you're looking at scientists here at the front of the room. Uh, so it's the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes, especially in an in industry. So I want to ask our panelists, where do tech ideas come from? Um, I can and the mics should be working. If you speak into them, that would help. Testing, testing. Oh, they, okay. Yeah. yeah. Or is it just the one on the end? They um, all should be working. I don't think mine's working. Button on the side, I think if you turn it on, maybe. Nope. There isn't on up. <laughs> 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 technology. It's great. Speaking of technology. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so I can start. Um, so I, I believe um, it first starts with um, passion. If you're passionate about something, I think um, that's a that's one of the key components, and I think the one that follows it very closely is knowing what you're good at um, and I think when you combine the two things because what you're passionate about and what you're good at could be totally different things might not even be you know related um, it you know and you might have to you come up with these great combinations that I think can lead to sort of these business ideas um, that 
you know, can either change the world or change your immediate surroundings, the people um, you work with or the place you work at or, you know, the places you live in. Um, so I think combining the two things, um, passion and what you're good at, um, can kind of help you develop your own um, sort of business ideas um, in tech. I can talk about it. What's that? No, I said I can too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dean Foster, for um, welcoming us uh, here on campus. Um, and I think I kind of um, agree to what George said that uh, ideas come from passion, maybe, and then how we can, you know, take them and serve to serve something some common good and make an impact on uh, where we are and in the society we live in in the community we live in i think that's the driving force and um, and that can change into something you know which we can call a business or a startup as we, you know we go along um, so i guess that's probably what you know what you just said and i'm kind of repeating the same thing but that's <laughs> probably what it is uh, so the question was going back to like, where is it the innovation, like the idea? Exactly. Yeah, so, you know. So just if I can jump in. Yeah. So Carlos actually works with a lot of entrepreneurs. So, you know, he's a very good person to answer this. Yeah, so it, it, a, a lot of it, it sounds like, you know, the Peter Griffin, what, what, what grinds my gears, like some people just have an, an inquisitive nature about them where they find a problem and they try to think, am I the only one that finds this to be a problem? Like with the cell phones, like some guy wanted to carry it around his typewriter. It was very difficult, and they waited until a little word processor into an application. I just stuff all this stuff into a phone. Um, I know I'm trying to be tongue in cheek about it, but sometimes that, that, that's really where for, I, these ideas come from. Someone's at the house, it bugs them enough to start to ask questions how can I make this better? Has anyone thought of this? And they start learning about the process of, you know, what do I need to do to make this a viable idea? What kind of education do I need? What kind of training do I need? What kind of legal protections? Because once the idea becomes something in their mind valuable, do they need to patent this? Do they need lawyers? So you start digging down the hole, uh, and, and fortunately for all of you in the room, you're in the right place where you have to start with education first. Because in my space uh, that, that I work in, um, there are tons of great ideas, and the failures that typically happen are, are, are those that you know, had, had a great idea but just didn't have a plan. So education is where these plans uh, sort of help you turn your ideas into something positive. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings me to your entrepreneurs. You work with entrepreneurs. Um, why be an entrepreneur instead of working in somebody else's business and you know contributing your ideas there? Why did you decide to go into entrepreneurship? Um, I think for me, I think an entrepreneur uh, just arrogantly thinks I can do it better. Um, I think you need a little bit of that arrogance, um, for sure. Um, especially if you, I don't, you know, I started out in the field working um, at these big uh, firms, and I was looking at certain things that they did very well, and then I was like, ah, oh, me, think I could, I would do it this way, or I would lean harder on, you know, the technology, things like that. So, I think at some point, um, a little bit of arrogance is is needed, and because of that, I felt you know, passionate about design um, in architecture that, you know, I thought I can, I can start my own um, company, you know? Um, so it starts with that and it leans off what I mentioned before, that, that passion, that drive. Um, and for me, it was the idea of serving clients, serving people in my community, um, the way I thought it should be handled. So that was for me. <laughs> Um, well, I, I guess I'll take a little step back and kind of give a little idea of what how my journey was. It's probably very organic how it you know, happened in, uh, for me. Um, environment and you know climate has been my focus since the time I started my career, um, you know, very early on, and um, and it has been very fulfilling journey. But well, uh, if I you know go back. 15 years, uh, we had a product uh, which for us was very advanced in its time. Uh, it was, uh, you know, 
something which came out of passion you know we were working in you know on schools and we knew this is technology will come one day some people had patent about it and ideas about it we developed that product and then we kind of you know started exploring the market for that product and and you know we ended up in different parts of the world actually mm-hmm. uh, you know where we felt the need was uh, but then we also realized that you know time has to catch up sometimes technologies are faster you know you can develop something but then you also have to have you know the users the applications the people who need to be trained on the systems and so that was a very organic journey for me and as we realized that with time um, you know today we you know i am sitting here and uh, you know you know trying to wrap my all 15 years of journey in the line that how this organic um, journey happened for me and uh, uh, we can talk more as i'm sure we can you know unfold more and more of it as we talk today but i can pass to you thank you yeah so I, I made a. I mean, I made, I made a very big change. I, I used to work here right at Bristol Community College, which is seen as a you know relatively safe job. It's a state job. Why would I risk it and uh, join the nonprofit entrepreneurial space? Well, uh, because I had a again, it's always like that passion and and the ability to see where things are sort of you know trending towards. Um, I had a lot of great contact with people doing the work, developing new ideas, as well as contacts with people who are great funders. um they want to fund innovation they just don't have a vehicle to meet these people and i would always find myself in the middle so there is obviously a form of like an information economy that exists and i kind of saw my 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 place in that where i had a lot of great local contacts a lot of great regional and international contacts and they all wanted to meet with each other they just didn't have an opportunity to do that um and in the past 5 and a half 6 months i've been able to achieve that from companies all over from california to denmark and pretty much any everywhere in between uh, and they're all convening uh, in the greater Bedford area all because of offshore wind and th- th- even though this is a, a gigantic industry with a lot of entrepreneurs and opportunity it's still relatively quiet here in the region because it's still somewhat new so if you don't know someone that works in offshore wind yet uh, you will in the next 2 to 3 years uh, because of the impact that you're going to see in the entrepreneur space as well as the industry coming to support everyone in the region um i think to to relate it to um to technology something that made it very possible for you know someone uh, with our young company was technology um something that i was able to discover and through the, the opportunities um i was presented in my workplaces was um the the software we would be using to design these um uh these these giant buildings these multimillion dollar uh buildings was an incredible amount of power packaged into these softwares that you can then with a small te- a relatively small team of 3 you can develop you know your your strategy how you're going to attack these these large projects so then to me it made it less daunting um when we decided to go off on our own was the idea that we can bring in this technology that has so much uh power behind it to help us you know seem like we were a team of you know 20 30 people with just you know two of us like back to back like you know in my business partner's uh office you know in his home so it's it's that kind of level and we were able to use stuff like uh virtual reality um to help present stuff to our clients you know present them their homes before they even got to even uh you know start on it or put the first brick down so that sort of technology kind of also put us in a, in a fortuitous uh out uh, position where we were able to you know expand or move forward with a little more confidence that we had um a lot of um uh, tools available to us even from a small you know startup so thank you so much would you take a few minutes to tell us about your companies um tell us what makes you excited about the work that you're doing um tell us um maybe about your favorite project related to your company would you like to start i kind of talked <laughs> yeah, sure talked a bit already i can start um well i'll i'm representing um 
in your bed for today here, uh, and which is, uh, I'll, instead of saying that long name, I'll call it NBMI. <laughs> It'll be easier uh, for me to then be faster and, and talking. Um, so the company which I serve on the board, which also I co-founded with my partner, is, also, is one of the companies is Robosys. And the product we have is a, uh, we provide autonomous systems, uh, autonomous systems to the maritime industry. And those platforms can then be you know, uh, deployed anywhere to serve any need in the oceans. Uh, it can have any kind of payload, uh, whatever, you know, it can have sensors, it can have uh, for serving, it can have uh, cameras for surveillance, it can have, you know, all different kind of things. It can, um, you know, and those systems can then be deployed in any kind of uh, um, space like let's say right now we have a uh, working with a partner in uh, in Spain and they have a fully electric vehicle uh, a, a system which is a USV uh, a service vessel and we have completely automated it and now it's serving in the survey for uh, you know uh, offshore for uh, the Spanish government so those are the systems we have um, the other company which I'm also representing is in VMI and that the focus of that company is workforce development. You know, that's where I'm training and how those systems which are serving in certain parts and certain sectors still, if they have to be deployed, because this is a very new industry and a lot of things are still evolving as we realize the potential of these technologies and you know, how we can deploy them uh, in current you know, uh, scenarios and in the places we need them. And what kind of skills do we need? What kind of people we need in this? And what will it take to get there? Is uh, where you know we are focusing on this company, and so that's the other part of uh, what I'm doing. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Shobi. Yeah, so, my, so again, my name is Carlos, and I and I represent the New Bedford Ocean Cluster as the business development manager. Um, the cluster, in and of itself, is a growing marine association, marine business association. And we serve four key pillars. Uh, the one that gets the most attention just due to the news is offshore wind is a pillar. Uh, commercial fishing and processing is the second pillar in, in there. Um, being that New Bedford was, or has been for years, uh, the largest uh, commercial fishing port in the country by catch um, due to the scallops, the scallop fleet that, that, that exists there. Um, following up, the third pillar would be innovation technology, which Shilpi is a part of, you know, her company is, is a member of the Bedford Ocean Cluster. We're very thankful for that. And our fourth pillar is aquaculture. So as you can see, typically you, you'll have a, one association that only focuses on, on one specific entity, which would be fishing, offshore wind, or aquaculture. Uh, we're taking on four uh, because we acknowledge that all of these four uh, industries uh, have a lot of cross collaboration. Um, if you see in the news that there, there are some proponents to offshore wind uh, that are from the commercial fishing industry, but then you have some that are some, sorry, some that are very supportive of the efforts, um, all because of the opportunity to collaborate. You know, there, there are things that, there are opportunities where you, you can still be a fisherman and yet support offshore wind in the off season, but that isn't typically marketed, but that doesn't sell newspapers, right? Um, but organizations like us, you know, we, we do the, the, the crosswalk to ensure that when those opportunities are present, we keep them local. A lot of, a lot of the work that we're doing is to keep opportunities local. Uh, we want to train uh, the workforce in the area through education and actual workforce development training to, to be ready for when these jobs do come up. So again, four key missions. Um, any, anytime you want, want more information on them, we just recently went through an overhaul on our logo and website. So like Shelby, we made a national show, we're now nboc.org as opposed to newbedfordoceancluster.org, which gets a little wordy. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Thank you. Um, I, think the, I think the only thing I have in, in common with the other panelists is that in school, uh, one of our assignments was to design uh, you know, a wind turbine facility. Um, I think it was for a competitor or something. I think offshore wind ended up- It was up, Cape Wind back Yeah, it was Cape there. Wind, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and offshore wind ended up uh, being the one. but. Um, I think that leads to, to one of the things that I enjoy the most is you get to deal with a lot of these industries where, you, I mean, you're not, you're not proficient in, you're not either sometimes familiar with, right? 
and you have to take in um, kind of the, their experiences, like drag that, you know, um, all these by ask, asking the right questions, you know, what, what are they about? What is their mission, their vision? And how does my design facilitate that? Um, throughout one of the projects I, I was fortunate enough to work on on a small team and unlike a lot of my friends after graduating from uh, university I got to design early on I was actually designing these these uh, buildings while most of them you know were just you know pushing paper paying their dues I was fortunate enough to get those opportunities and design and it, it led me to one project that I, I enjoyed uh, quite a bit which was for the Carpenters Union uh, it was a it was a new a new the new headquarters in Rhode Island off of 95, uh, which was really fun one to work on because um, we had to create a building that um, also worked as a billboard because we were right off 95. They wanted people to see uh, carpenters, right? We're more than just we do more than just wood. And I was like, all right, what else do you do? You know, so the types of materials that they they would work with, you know, they can put up certain types of stone terracotta, things like that, really show off uh, their craftsmanship in a, in, a, in a nice way. And it was really fun for me um, to, you know, go from like, like we do, everything starts with a piece of paper and a pen and an idea and thoughts and asking questions to these individuals that are very passionate about what they do, um, you know, and they want to celebrate that and show that off um, to, to the community around them, but also, you know, to their stakeholders, um, to their families, everybody involved. So it, the thing I love most about what I do is that, yeah, you have this design that you take full ownership of, but what I love seeing is how other people take ownership of that um, as well as they come in and they have, you know, even the guy who put down the, the bricks to the guy who's doing the plumbing, they take ownership of that same building. And what we do, you know, can impact the, the immediate surrounding area, or it could go beyond that, um, depending on you know the people who influence. Because it takes it takes a village to even do one small project. Um, so I think that's what I enjoy the most is the collaboration you can have with a variety of people and different interests. Uh, really dive into them. You get a glimpse of what they do. You don't get the full picture, um, but. That's the that's the fun part. And as much as I love working on a project, I love when it's done because that means I can jump on another one. So, yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I guess what I'm wondering now is um, you started with a great idea. You're currently growing your businesses and everything. How did you prepare for all that? Did you take business classes? Did you observe people? How did you get your business education? so that you feel confident enough to actually start your business and grow it? Um, I can go. <laughs> so uh, I think a little bit is definitely risk. Um, it's, uh, I think starting on your own, going venturing off, I think there's definitely risk involved um, in that. You try to make it a calculated risk, right? Taking the right courses, um, talking to the right people. I know um, as a student here, at BCC back when I think you're the Hawks now, right? It used to be the bees. Yeah, yeah it used to be the bees. <laughs> uh, but uh, some of the things I was able to do here was take full advantage of the opportunities. You know, I was able to talk to, to the right people in your department uh, who were able to get me grants so that I can do an internship. I was able to work on, on a net, uh, net zero building, one of the first mandatory uh, public buildings um, in the state of Rhode Island, um, which was very cool. Um, but and that was all before I even started architecture school because of the people, I, the networking that I did um, in school, and I even got to work in the facilities department of the school. You know, I was the ones doing all the plans, uh, um, you know, the existing stuff and the proposed. Um, so that that fueled me, and and that allowed me to determine that yes, architecture was the path for me. Uh, to follow my passion, I was able to go to Roger Williams and pursue that pursue that passion. Um, but and then take all the opportunities there. I took you know I worked at big firms, so I I, I took advantage of all the um, technology that was available to them, all the resources. Right, they had all the interior designers, all the engineers, and I was able to conversations with them, take it all in, attend networking events. So I think it was trying to take in 
um, every place that I found myself in, try to take the most out of the opportunities that were presented there. Um, and again, it's definitely a risk um, for sure. Um, and you jump into it, you know, and I know with my business partner, when you going in with a business partner, you know, it's like almost like you're gonna marry the person, right? So you find out everything about them. You know, you get, you're like, you know, what are your beliefs? <laughs> You know, what does your bank account look like? Um, things, you know, you start really getting to know them. How do you, where do you see yourself in, you know, a couple of years and let's raise this baby into, you know, a very profitable company that helps people out. So um, I think for sure it's, um, it's that, it's, it's taking the opportunities. Uh, first, you know, look out for them and then, and then go after them because, and, and networking because um, those kind of lead you into, in, you know, into the right path, or those um, a lot present themselves later on in a different form. Um, while you're doing this, you know, on your own, and it can really be beneficial. And things you, you know, you took advantage, you you took for granted before, come back, and you appreciate them more. So, yeah. Um, well, I guess what business school, if um, does, if you have to rephrase the question, how a business uh, education helps, is that? Well, I'm asking, do you yes. do a formal business education? Yes. Um, so I guess one thing I would like to reflect on over here is, um, you know, having a product, you can do business education before or after. Um, it's not mandatory, but it is very helpful in, in helping you organize and structure how you want to move forward, how you can have a greater impact, how you can make these right connections and network which can help you amplify your cause. And I think that's where the B school education and you know core knowledge comes in. Um, the uh, the other thing which um, it, it also helps you read the finance sheets, I guess. <laughs> you know the numbers when you're talking when you go higher and higher from product development to you know go you you go raise, you know talking to different people on different tables and different situations, you find that you can talk back. You can you find more knowledge knowledge you know in in, in negotiations and as you rise up and the ladder as your business grows. So that's that's where I think it comes in. It might not be handy at the very first when you're starting your you know, startup and you're setting it up, but it does come, you know, becomes more and more useful as you, uh, you know, grow and um, grow your business. Um, for uh, for us, it was like, um, you know, we started the, uh, the business first and then in a later point, we realized maybe we should, you know, we did that, the business part and it was, you know, it. It did all what we just, you know, I said. So that was very helpful. Uh, I don't know if I don't want to cut into time, but I wanted to also reflect on the other two questions asked, and I thought it'll be just a quick thought which crossed my mind if I don't. Yeah. Um, one thing which you know I think Dean Foster uh, asked earlier was you know the, talking about the project and the product, and I thought I'll quickly reflect a little bit on that and take this opportunity. Um, so what uh, the the pro the, you know, the product which we have which which we had was you know it's like a explainable AI system and how do you now what can you do with the explainable AI what are the edges what are the advantages of an explainable AI in today's world and when you think of that and that you know that's a, that is a differentiator which you have from your competitors and I think that's when you're thinking of your products those are one th some things which you have to keep in mind how what kind of differentiator are you bringing on the table among competitors and so that's one thing you know we have and i feel of uh, you know moving forward that is going to give you, you know anybody in any business what you're trying to set an advantage uh, of how you want to think about um, your business and um, in terms of the project let's say um, and for some of you explainable ai is you know, when you are using these AI-based, artificial intelligence-based systems, and what an explainable AI will, platform will do is, it will be very transparent in this, uh, and tell the user what, why it's making certain decisions, why it's proposing certain solutions, and using what parameters. For example, if you're using an autonomous vessel in an in a, in a ocean, and it's, it's gonna tell you, uh, that this is these are the obstacles it avoided, why it avoided, why because of uh, what route it proposes, and what parameters it uses. So that way, you know, when a user is using it, it becomes very evident um, of uh, and 
that why you know this system has has been proposed and then second it also gives the user confidence in using those systems so when when you're thinking about these products and you're you know as you're advancing through your you know uh, in a business ideas you you know those things are you know good to keep in mind and how you can you know have that edge sorry Yes, yeah, so I'm probably the one who didn't have the formal business education. I, I did start off in the corporate sector as a banker for several years, and my task at that point in time was to support businesses. You know, that, that's where I learned uh, the majority of the challenges related to financing that do uh, impact entrepreneurs, and that's where I learned about the grant programs, like George was speaking about. Um, currently, in New Bedford and other major cities, so you, you're going to see economic development councils that want to spur you know, entrepreneurial spirit within the city. So New Bedford has a program at the time, as of last year, with the NB100, whether you lived in New Bedford or started a business that was going to be in New Bedford, um, you could qualify for up to $10,000 in grants to get a business off the ground if you went through a, a specific business mentorship program, education pathway to, make, to give you the best chance to succeed. So those exist in, in the majority of these cities. And again, it, it will help with some of the risk and, and ease some of that, uh, that, that panic that entrepreneurs do feel when they're about to make that jump on their own. Um, there are tools to help you with that. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to pause for a minute now and see if students have questions. I have more, but this is for you. So if you have questions, I'd like to give you an opportunity to ask. Right. Which is grants yep. and stuff, um, but I always wonder, like uh, going into starting uh, your own business, how do you get past the financial uh, fears? I guess of you know, what if something goes wrong or or anything like that. I think the fear is always there. You just learn to live with it, right? You you understand? You understand? Like like it's gonna like fire is always gonna be hot, right? So like, how close do you want to get to? You're always right. you're gonna need to you're gonna feel that anyway. I mean, I think a lot of people just learn to be tolerant of the risk and they learn how to prevent some of the potential issues. Like if you know you're only going to be having a certain amount of cash flow per month, don't overextend yourself, leading, like relying onto your credit lines, that, that compounds and you will dig a hole that you cannot get out of. So, you know, just learn to live with those fears and I, I guess that's, it's, a, it's a good to have a fear yeah. of that. <laughs> Exactly, it, it pushes you to be more successful and also keeps you from overspending, you know. So it, you almost like competition with yourself at that point, but yeah, you can't avoid it, it'll always be there. Yeah, thank you. Would you like to speak to that? Uh, I, I think there's a question here. Oh, another question. Okay, go ahead. I was checking out Trezor Design website. Oh. Very impressive. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> How long have you been in business? Uh, 2021 we started so speaking of the, of the risk the the risk the financial risk in that uh, for sure it's definitely it's definitely a fear and you, what you do is it's that calculated risk right uh, mentors mentors are, are a great tool um, seek out mentors you know um, just because they're your boss doesn't mean they're the right mentor for you so I think it has to be a, a back and forth you know it has to work for either, for both parties but a mentor, can really um, guide you, you know, or at least just uh, listen, be invested uh, in your future, you know. So uh, mentors are a great tool that you can utilize to help guide you, you know. But as far as that financial risk, for sure, it's definitely there. And I think entrepreneurs, if you're passionate enough, you push through that, you know, that fear um, and you jump on that, you know, that risk because of, of what you're really interested in. Um, and in my case, that's why um, I kind of did like a soft, <laughs> call it, uh, startup. Um, I was moonlighting while I was a, at, a, at another firm, you know, trying to see, trying to develop what it takes to develop a business. And what I realized is there is no way I'm going to do this by myself. So that's why when we started Traza, I looked for a partner. I looked for a business partner that had similar vision and mindset, you know, we had opposing um, views on certain things, but it was the right stuff. Um, so, you know, I was able to lean on somebody else, you know, and, and that's every day, you know, somebody's solving, somebody's leaning, you know, here comes the other person. So that was the, the tools that I used um, to help kind of risk that. And there's other programs like Carlos was mentioning, 
that we're jumping into next year that will help us. Um, I, I think the one we're jumping into is called 10,000 um, Small Businesses from Goldman Sachs. It's a free program that they offer. You just apply and it's only if you get accepted, right? You meet certain requirements and it's free. So things like that is we keep finding, we keep opening our eyes, going to these events and networking with other people um, to find those, uh, those tools. Any other questions from the audience? Um, Carlos, earlier um, today in your presentation, you mentioned how entrepreneurs are solutions-based. Can you provide some advice or strategies for students to become more solutions-oriented? Because I think this could be really valuable no matter what role they go into. Yeah, and I think that the solutions-based mentality comes with like age and experience, right? Because sometimes you have a problem, like, I can't figure this out. Like, there's no way to do that. And you, have to, you just have to like step back, like from emotion sometimes, and just try to think objectively of an issue. You know, I, again, with us, we we had six five weeks ago now actually uh, our first offshore wind conference, which is a pretty daunting you know event to take part in. When people were literally coming from California to Denmark and trying to navigate all the logistics of this, and it's a team of two, and I'm working across eight different time zones and I'm like, wait, why, why, why are we doing this? Like, what? I, I, the, the, the easy option could have just been to just back away and, and not not take on that a challenge. Um, but, you know, started realizing the benefits. Sometimes you think about beyond yourself, like all right, the benefits of the region will be tremendous if this is a success. You have to think about, you know, what it means for your business, what it means for your future goals. Um, so certainly having a solution based mindset just puts you in a positive Spin. It, it gets you in the right frame. If you start thinking about what you can't do, then you're going to be right. But if you start thinking about what you can do, you're also going to be right. So it all depends on where you put your energy. Great, thanks. Thank you. So you talked about risk. You talked about um, um, the importance of collaboration and knowing who you're working with. Are there any other um, really important things that our future entrepreneurs need to know about starting their own business? It could be challenges that you faced and how you overcame them. Could be key skills that you think that they need. I think one of the key skills is just getting comfortable talking with people again. I know a lot of the stuff that we're doing is so, uh, I know technology we talked about. It's ease of use with, with some of the different social platforms. I use those. A lot of people are on, let's say, LinkedIn. It's a great way to at least, you know, have your door opening you know, you, you know, session. But just get back in the habit of networking. You know, you don't know who will be a good partner at some point time down the line. We host events all the time, and I think I every time I think I have a good idea of the, you know, layout of, of the ecosystem we have going on. I meet someone new that completely opens up even more doors of opportunity ideas for me so definitely keep your minds open and just be willing to talk and engage it sounds easy but <laughs> in this in this economy and in this day and age it's surprisingly difficult for some folks to just get out of their shell a little bit just because everything we went through for the past couple of years so as, as you get back out there just be comfortable little by little engage with people more and more and you'll see benefits from it okay well one from me please um i'm dr Corey. My, my background is actually maritime, so it's good to see your <laughs> business is connected to the maritime. We came from a, a marketing class, so we'd like to hear from you, you know, practical. Um, how did you go about, or how do you go about marketing your, uh, your businesses to, to uh, our students who came from that? Sure. Uh, should I start? Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, in the um, talking about marketing again, it has been you know once you know we we come up with a solution. We had something which we believed in. We know what the impact it can you know have you know not now and later. And so what it does is it brings you you know you for us it was again you know marketing the the way it's structured now. It wasn't like that before that we just started. So it was being with the right group of people who can amplify your voice, who can amplify your cause, and who can be there, you know, to support, you know, have the same, you know, reasons to be there why you are there. And and that's how 
thinking of solution is important. Are you, are you really working on a solution which can make an impact or which can change something, you know, which can address a crucial problem around you in the society? And that's how you start. And then eventually, you know, you get there where you can then put a, a formal team, you can then, you know, now we are in different, you know, continents and then we have the right group of people to support the cause and, you know, uh, and get your voice out there. And then you can, and eventually you can, you, you know, start using, if you think of technology, you can start using different platforms and connect with the right people, you know, you have um, uh, to reach out to the, you know, people who, you know, believe in that and, and um, the governments who believe in that. And that's how you kind of, you know, we, that is, was our, our story organically, how we got where we are today. Um, and maybe you can reflect more on that. Yeah, um, I think um, it kind of goes hand in hand with um, the thing you should know about and communication, right? Um, and marketing is a, is a great tool. Um, and, but I think marketing is um, definitely um, could be more precise and more valuable when you know how to direct it. Um, for example, when we first started, we were, you know, Traza Design, we'll design anything for you. We do it all, whenever, wherever, you know, we'll do it. And then it was like, I can't do everything, you know, you can't do it all. So we started realizing who we were, you know, we're Traza Design, we're residential design, you know. Okay, we're residential design in single two family homes. We're single two family homes in Rhode Island. <laughs> so we kept narrowing it down uh, because at the beginning, what we were doing is we were, we were basically telling the whole world, look at us, here we are, if you need us, but I'm not gonna fly overseas or I'm not gonna go to that other state because <laughs> you know, I'm not certified there. <laughs> so uh, things like that. So starting narrowing down, you know, social media was definitely helpful, but it got to a point where we needed to target our audiences more so uh, we we did something that I didn't think I was ever going to be doing was yard signs, you know, yard signs. We put them outside the homes we were designing. Boom, we get a call. Hey, I saw you were doing this house, you know, um, in in the street over. Um, I was thinking of a project, you know, so more targeted designs. You know, we're thinking like um, high schools, families that are growing, you know, need design. So. Let's help them out. Let's put up a banner in, um, you know, the uh, local high school um, where they see their games. So it's I think it's first understanding exactly who you are, what's your 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 niche, your industry, your 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 neighbors, the people you 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 know. And I think that comes with communication. Um, that's definitely a key thing, uh, being able to communicate with people, build because that allows you to build trust very quickly. Sometimes you need people to trust you before you even get um, into business with them. So um, definitely a great tool. First know who you are, and then you can be a little more effective with your marketing strategies. And then, or you can just build your own website like I did that you were looking at. <laughs> but it, but, if, but eventually, eventually like, you know, maybe get an expert. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so certainly again, regarding the expert part, um, taking marketing classes will save you a lot of money. So we went to the Bedford Ocean Cluster. Um, it's very key. I think George mentioned earlier about you know getting in with partners that have a similar mission and, and vision as you, and, and that that should be part of your marketing you know, to keep you honest and keep you on track. Um, going back to the conference that we held, it was it was, it was a two day event. Uh, Thursday of that week, you know we showcased the city of New Bedford proudly, the whole port. We had different career tracks, supply chain, workforce and innovation and technology. So the city was highlighted beautifully from international partners, you know, across offshore wind. Friday was supposed to have been scheduled to be a tour of the Vineyard Wind site, but due to a Coast Guard issue with the vessel, we were not able to go visit the actual turbine site to see the first installed turbine at that time. Um, originally that could have derailed it, that could have easily derailed uh, the conference itself, but we stuck true to the mission. You know, if we read the tagline, and the Bedford Ocean Cluster is designed you know, to connect New Bedford's maritime industry to the world. The tour itself is not a part of it. It's just, it was a nice to have, but it wasn't, it wasn't a necessity. But if, if we didn't have that direction, if we didn't have that focus, we could have easily gone to the negatives and say, oh, this is a complete failure. No, it was just something that happens. But in, in terms of your marketing, you know, make sure that you have a good plan. Uh, take the class to save yourself some money. We were in a position where we were able to hire a marketing firm like professionals that, that, that do do this 
that took our big ideas and pared them down again to say, you know, you can't be all things to everybody. At some point in time, even though you have four pluses, you have to start whipping this into shape and, and, and getting direction or else it just goes off track. And, you know, those instances, you know, those companies do help, you know, keep businesses honest, but they do cost. So again, take the class, save some money and learn and then <laughs> apply the lessons. Um, and to add on to, if I do what uh, just you both said, I in the maritime early on, when we had the product, when we knew what we have, uh, and we, it needed testing. So, what do you? How do you prove this to the world? What do you do? So we had, uh, we were fortunate enough to have a group of people in which uh, had a team of commodores, who actually, you know, at that time, uh, started testing that. They were in, they believed in the vessel. They. They took it out in the ocean and they put a lot of testing hours on it. And once you know you have, you know, how this is growing and people, you know, in the in the maritime sector, mariners, you know, have now, uh, you know, believe in your products, then you, you know, the word gets out there and then you start, you know, building on, on that. So uh, that was what would happen early on, uh, if I have to reflect back on that time. Fantastic. Uh, question for the audience. Uh, how many of you? are thinking about entrepreneurship, business, that type of future. Come on, proud. <laughs> Panelists, advice to our future business owners, entrepreneurs, in our last few minutes. Oh, geez, let's go with us, all right? <laughs> do it. You know, set a, set a plan, but certainly do it. I think, I think people, a lot of people have more regrets when they don't do something than regrets of something that they tried and it didn't succeed the way they wanted to so set your plan and go for it yeah i i don't know how many um of my classmates or even you know older people that i used to work with uh would tell me oh that's that's great that you did that you know like i wish i you know i always regret not doing it you know 15 years ago or whatever and i know my partner and i took that um into account it was like we don't want to wait till you know we're 50, 60, where we're definitely pros at that point, you know, but we wanted to start earlier so we can grow with the industry, take that leap, um, but don't take it lightly, you know, do, do, your, um, uh, do your homework, <laughs> you know, look, look at what's the opportunities, what's the market, but I think don't be afraid of making that jump because you can also help, you know, make the change impact the industry um, whether you think it's globally or at a smaller scale, um, for sure, I think it's it's doing your homework, seeing what's out there, look at the opportunities. There's a lot of help for small businesses. Um, and if you're thinking bigger, good for you. <laughs> right. No, I think I, I say, echo the same you know, advice, just if you have an idea or you want to do something, go and do it. And don't be dis discouraged by your failures. Basically, they will just think them as a learning opportunity. You know, you come back and you, you know, you, as if you know, you re-strategize and you go back out there and just try it out and 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 you know, participate in small hackathons and or small little you know, small fundings to tap into. You know, so there's so much out there actually. If you start looking, connecting with the you know networking, and you'll find these small you know funds which are out there or small you know network groups which will help you build it you know from scratch so don't be afraid go out there and be, you'll find a lot of support reach out yes so, so i'd like to thank you all for joining us um, this was a great partnership with uh, dean Rangi, and um, thank you all for coming out thank you panelists this was an invaluable experience. We really appreciate you giving up your time. And um, I wish everyone well.